Hello guys, you're watching Foolish Engineers videos. We have seen multiple power supply techniques like linear regulators, constant current regulators, and many type of DC to DC switching converters. Today we are going to look at DC to DC converter, which doesn't need an inductor, and it is also not a linear one. We are going to talk about a capacitor-based charge pump power supply. Many people call it the forgotten converter. So let's start. Before going into the concept, I would like to mention today's sponsors. This video is made possible because of Texas Instruments. They are pioneers of the semiconductor world. They make those tiny ICs which we see in the socket boards. Their team has provided the evaluation board of this charge pump boost converter which we are going to test and understand. Let's see some basics of this converter. The charge pump voltage converters use ceramic or electrolytic capacitor to store and transfer energy. Capacitors are more common and much cheaper than the inductive coils, which we use in other types of DC to DC converters. We can make this type of capacitive converter by just switching it periodically. In general case, mere diodes are sufficient, but it gives alternating output. If we really want a DC voltage, we have to use active switches like transistors to get it, which first charge the capacitor by connecting it across the input voltage and then connect it to the output, such a way that it produces a different voltage level. It is very similar to charge pump gate driving technique, which we saw in one of our previous videos. This type of power supply is very useful where the power requirement is very less and there is voltage variation. Well, Let's see the working of this converter. This is how the circuit would look like. We need four switches and a capacitor. This capacitor is the key component here. Four switches Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4 are connected in this manner. It is similar to the H-bridge network and we connect the flying capacitor at this junction. The input will be connected here and output will be on this side after Q4. Now let's see how the circuit works. Let's assume we have around 2.5 volts at the input, but we need 5 volts at the output, which is double the input voltage. So this capacitor comes to the rescue. There are two steps. In first step, this Q2 and Q3 turn on and charge this capacitor to 2.5 volts. Once this capacitor is fully charged, we turn on Q1 and Q4. Now the current will flow in this direction. So the input voltage of 2.5 volts and this capacitor voltage of 2.5 volts will add up and give us the output voltage of around 5 volts. As soon as this capacitor discharges, output voltage starts to go below 5 volts. In that case, the output capacitor will provide the power at the output. And during this time, Q1 and Q4 turn off. Following, Q2 and Q3 are turned on to charge this flying capacitor again. This process repeats very fast. For that, we have to provide PWM pulses to this MOSFET with very high frequency. Also, even if there is change in the input voltage, we can regulate this output by changing the duty cycle of this PWM signals. Well, now the question arises, how is it different from other power supply technologies that we use? If we compare a charge pump based buck regulator against an inductive solution, we can eliminate the inductor. But we get around 10 to 20% lower efficiency than an inductive buck. But the charge pump saves space on our board. Charge pump regulators have approximately 20% greater efficiency than the same specification low dropout linear regulator. But it requires more space by adding only a few small ceramic capacitors as long as output ripple is not a huge design issue. There are a lot of design solutions of such charge pump IC that provides higher efficiency than an LDO. Awesome part is it is both bug and boost type of power supply. 
If the voltage is more than 5 volts at the input, it will regulate it down to 5 volts by adjusting the duty cycle. And as we saw earlier, if the voltage is less, then it boosts the input voltage. The only catch is, there should not be too much gap between input and output voltage requirement. So basically, a charge pump produces a regulated, low noise and low ripple output voltage from an unregulated input voltage. Well, we understood what a charge pump power supply is and how this type of converter works. Now let's say its actual version. There is no satisfaction of a design until and unless we test it in the real world. To see that, we'll use TPS60151 IC from TI, which works on this principle. This ASIC takes input voltage from 2.7 volts to 5.5 volts and gives the output of constant 5 volts. Here just 3 capacitors are enough for this power supply. No need of fancy switches and power inductors. To test it, we can use this evaluation board of TPS60151 from Texas Instruments. Let's wire it up and test it out. This is our charge pump boost converter evaluation board. This is very small. And if you see here, this tiny IC is our ASIC for charge pump boost converter. And there are input and output capacitors. To test it out, I've connected a DC power supply at the input. And at the output side, I have connected an electronic load. Basically, it is a programmable load where we can program how much current this electronic load will draw from the circuit. As per the data sheet, this IC can supply up to 140 milliampers. So I'll test it around 135 or 138 milliampere current. And I will change the input voltage from 2.7 volts to 5.5 volts. And we will check if you are getting some constant output voltage. Now I will turn on the power supply. As you can see here, the input voltage is around 2.7 volts. And the output voltage from the circuit is around 5.24 volts. Now I will turn on this load. As you can see, this load is drawing around 135 or 136 milliampers and this voltage dropped to 4.84 volts. Basically, this is a loading condition. If I change the output current requirement, as you can see, now it is taking 120 milliampers. Now we will change the input voltage and see if you are still getting the constant output voltage or not. Now it is around 5.5 volts. Still, if you see here, we are getting 4.9 volts. Here also, if I change the load current requirement, still, we are getting 4.99, that is 5 volts output. And this is how basically we can use a charge pump based boost converter using capacitor as a power supply for our circuit. Well, we saw the greatness of this converter. It wouldn't hurt us if you look at some dark side of this bad boy. First of all, it cannot handle a wide range of input voltage. It has a very tiny window. Second, it can provide very low output current, usually in few hundred milliampers. And capacitor cannot change their voltage level very fast like inductors. A changing capacitor voltage always follows the exponential function which imposes limitations that an inductor-based voltage converter cannot avoid. For that, we have to pay more price. Well, you must be wondering that this is such a small circuit and how is it helping when it provides such small load current? Well, my friend, you're not wrong. But there are a lot of consumer electronic applications such as HDMI cable, USB and OTGs where we can see those. Have you ever seen these things that are very tiny and also need very less current? That's where this small power supply is useful. This is how we can use this type of circuit. I hope you learned something useful today. To learn more about such things, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. 
I will see you in next video. Till then, stay hungry, stay foolish.